Good morning, good people. My name is Mickey J, and I am the host of the Black Girl Budget Podcast. Happy Saturday. I am so excited because, y'all, you know what? Let's just get into it. I'm about to fangirl, and let's just go ahead and get into it. Today, we have Nika Booth from Debt Free going to be with us. Nika, how are you doing today? Ew, hello, hello. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you today. I'm so excited to have you. So Nika is like, first of all, we are friends in real life, and she's yes. a sore, but also oh, yes. just one of my fave people on Instagram because you do a combination of realistic information but you also have fun with it and I think we lose that sometimes so if y'all are not following Nika it's debt free gonna be on Instagram um and TikTok right are you on TikTok I'm on TikTok I'm on all the socials at debt free gonna be yes okay debt free gonna be I need y'all to follow her because she will help you get your life together um but she's also going to provide you with like updates and information on just okay this is not something we were going to talk about but (laughs) <laughs> I, can I just say, I love how you are always keeping us up to date on like changes just nationwide. Like, I know you're like the first person I see posting about the student loan extensions or just anything related to finances in general. I think um, there was an increase in like 401ks or IRAs or something and you were posting about that. I just, I want to say that I love how up to date you are and you update your audience so often. I just, I love that. Thank you. I, I consider myself an infopreneur, I guess, you know, Ooh. like there's all these preneurs, right? There's mompreneurs, entrepreneurs. I think mm-hmm. that my, I, for some reason, I thrive off of information, right? I love yes. reading. I like being in the know, especially when it comes to our finances. And I think part of financial literacy isn't just understanding the basics of income, expenses, budgeting, saving and investing, but it's also the things that tend to change um, that we don't have control over that, but that directly impacts our money and what we're capable of doing with it. And so um, to your point about all, you know, like the student loan updates, you know, I've got student loans and I'm sure we're going to jump into that, you know, Mm -hmm. in in this discussion, (laughs) but, you know, so as much as I'm keeping all these other people that tend to follow along on my journey up to date. I'm also keeping me up to date and I'm providing the information that I would want to know, right. Mm -hmm. Or that I wanted to know prior to me jumping on this journey and becoming as financially literate as I am today. I love that. I love that you're providing the information for your audience, but for yourself as well, because sometimes we forget that we also need to, you know, update our own knowledge base that we have, even though we are, informing other people on just how to become debt free, how to invest and how to save. So with that being said, my first question is, how long have you been on your debt free journey? Too damn long. Um, So (laughs) I, for real, for real, you know, because I've I've shared and we've talked, you know, personally, I started and stopped my debt free journey a number of times, you know, I would kind of have, I would, I would get everything in order, but I would like start and I would half-ass do it, right? (laughs) I would pay off debt here, but rack it up over there. So if we're talking about me um, fully being 10 toes down and being consistent, I Mm -hmm. have been on the journey. I started in September of 2018. So it's been a little over three years now. Nice, nice. And I mean, I love that you said you you stop and you start and you pay some over here, but rack it up over here. A lot of people think that paying off debt is just like this one trajectory nope. where you are just on the up and up, but no. y'all real life. Uh, no, <laughs> it's not always real life. Like it's, it's not, you know, and that's not just with a financial journey and paying off debt. It's with life. I mean, right. I trigger warning for anybody who struggles with food, but I always equate, um, you know, this, debt-free journey with Mm -hmm. any journey to eat better, exercise, you know, total Mm -hmm. wellness, um, because they have similar challenges, right? Um, And it's also something that I've struggled with as well as debt, but no, like none of these things are linear. You don't go from point A straight to point B. You go from point A, you experience some bullshit in between, (laughs) you know, you get a little, you take a couple steps back and then you you take uh you know a few steps forward before you get to to step b so you know for anybody who is experiencing the ups and downs and the bs that i'm referring to don't get discouraged that's all a part of the process because at the same time 
that we're, you know, trying to tackle our debt or trying to, you know, become healthier versions of ourselves, Mm -hmm. life is still happening. And there's just certain things about life we can't predict. It is. And it's, it's so like, I know it's easier said than done, but y'all have to believe us when we say, we talk about this on Instagram, on TikTok, YouTube, wherever, every single day, but there is real life happening. And I think for the most part, we try to incorporate that to be transparent and realistic, but don't beat yourself up. If you get to, you know, you're doing really good in January and then you get to February and it's just like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm, I'm really tired of paying off debt. And it's only the second month in the year, you know, accommodate yourself and extend yourself some grace and don't beat yourself up about that. Um, And just remember that you do have an end goal. So I like to tell people pivot. If your goal was to pay off a credit card by December, but you feel like in in April or in July, you need to take a break, then pivot and pay it off by January the following year. So don't be so stringent that you are essentially causing harm to yourself in some way or another. Like, yeah, be kind and just remember that life is happening to all of us. Um, But with life happening, right, you're eventually going to have some wins and you are going to be able to say that you are 100% credit card debt free like Nika Ah! is. (laughs) You just became like 100% credit card debt free. How does it feel? It's hard to describe. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I still, someone messaged me just today on Instagram and was like, how does, how does it feel to get paid and not have to make a debt payment? Now, to be clear, Ooh. I still have debt. I still have $134,000 <laughs> in student loan debt, but mm. those payments are paused. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when, when she asked, it's like, man, you know, I haven't had to make, I have not made a single debt payment <laughs> since <laughs> I've gotten paid. And I'm about to come up on my second pay, paycheck in January. I almost didn't know what to do because I've been so... Um, you know, I've been so kind of dedicated, you know, and, and with my blinders on focused on paying off debt. it feels great. It still feels so real. So like when people ask or I say it out loud, it's just mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, I don't owe American Express. I don't <laughs> owe Discover. You know, these people more, I, they're still contacting me because now it's, um, you know, uh, you qualify for this card and oh, yeah. constantly trying to upgrade and, you know, upgrade my lifestyle with a, you know, now with a platinum card, you know, <laughs> um, or they're like, oh, you know, do you have a big purchase that you need to make? You can do it for zero percent, you know, so they're still in my life and I still use, you know, I still use credit cards, but a lot differently than the way I use them uh, before, but it's to answer your question. I know that was like the long way around it. It's, no, it, was it, good. it feels liberating. It good. feels like my load got that much lighter, mm. 50,000 plus dollars Oof. lighter, um, Oof. you know, and it feels great. It feels great. And I've got no regrets. And we're not going to just skip over the fact that you just said 50,000 plus dollars, like, that is a lot of money. That is one hell of an accomplishment. And I'm so proud of you because Thank you. it's so easy to look at that much debt and say, eh, and, and, and I'm quoting one of my friends who uh, every time we talk about this, she says, mm, I'm going to die owing somebody. And she just goes on about her day. Like mm. it's so easy to look at it and just say, I'll send the minimum payment or I'm I'm just not going to send it at all. But I, I love that you said it's liberating because you're going to get to a point where your student loans are either canceled, <clears throat> canceled, <Come> <laughs> canceled or paid off. And then you are making money and it's yours and you get to do it's whatever you want to. And so you kind of get to a point where you're like, you know what? I'm not going to go to work today. Cause I'm, I'm really not here for it. And oh, it's yeah. okay because your bills are taken care of and you don't owe anyone. You're not going to work simply because you have to pay people back. So I, like if y'all are not clapping in your car, in your kitchen right now for Nika, because that is a lot of money to it's pay a lot. off. So congrats. Yeah. Thank you. And that's just the credit cards, right? So yes. the 50 plus the 50,000 plus with the credit cards. But at the same time that I was tackling some of those cards, if, if you remember, I, mm-hmm. I also had $21,000 in tax debt. So yes. so far, I mean, I paid off over $70,000. I've released over $70,000 of debt. Yes, that is someone I know. Salary. Don't <laughs> I know it? <laughs> that is amazing. But I mean, when like 
as you start to not, and, and this is for anyone who has not really experienced that high you get when you officially pay something off, mm-hmm. when you start to knock off the small credit cards, the big ones, the large ones, the scary ones, the old ones, yeah. you like, I, something happens to my soul where I, I feel yes. a little bit more free, a little bit more yes. free. And it's like, I feel like I'm on the mountaintop screaming. And yeah. I'm just like, sh- I can't there's- wait. There's definitely a shift. Like I could definitely feel a shift happen, um, Mm -hmm. you know, where it's like, oh my goodness, I did this hard thing. And it almost, it almost gives you just a little, you know, a little or a lot more empowerment and Mm -hmm. confidence in your ability, in your abilities to do things, but also in your ability to tackle hard things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Now you differentiated between being credit card debt-free, which is really Mm -hmm. good, and Mm -hmm. then still having student loans. So we're about the same in the amount of student loans that we have. It's not a boat I I want anybody else in, to be honest with you. No. And we've talked about this before, um, where like, you know, we millennials mostly were were kind of told you need to go to college in order to get a good job we go to college yeah. they're paying us 15 dollars an hour we've got you know six figures in in student loan debt um but like you mentioned earlier we are kind of in a in a time where the student loan extension was extended again even though again even though the people said they weren't going to do that. Um, Mm -hmm. But even with that being extended, are you still preparing to wholeheartedly jump into tackling your student loan debt? Or are you just going to kind of let that hang out and just pay the minimum for a while? Well, I'm doing a combination of both. So like you said, you know, the the pause in the 0% interest has been extended until May. Mm -hmm. So even though I'm credit card debt free, I'm MF and tired. So <laughs> I, I won't be tackling my student loans until probably March. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just to give me some breathing room, you know, clear my mentals just to not have to feel like every time I get paid, I have to send more money to debt. Right. Um, but I do want to take advantage of the, of the little bit of time that would be left between March and May. Um, to make principal only payments. Um, and so, yeah. And, and, you know, and just to go a little bit deeper into that, um, I do qualify for pers- uh, public service loan forgiveness. Um, okay. I, but even with like the limited waiver and you hear it here first, because I haven't talked about my plan on Instagram yet. Oh, but even with the limited waiver, I still would have about three or four years left of student loan payments before I could even apply for forgiveness. And, you know, I, I was conflicted. It was like, well, you know, you started this journey to, to get out of all this other debt so that you could tackle your student loans and you weren't obligated to stick around in a particular industry or sector and career so that you could go on about your life. Um, And, but then it's also like, well, I mean, it's comfortable. I know what to expect. You know, I've got some flexibility. I'm working from home. You could just hang out. And so, you know, I slept on it a bit and I shook out to, even if I go in the way I've gone in on all the other debt that came before my student loans Mm -hmm. and I pay off that debt within the next two years, that's two additional years I had back of my life instead of waiting for public service loan forgiveness. And it's not to knock, of course, knock anybody who wants to pursue that route, go do you. Um, But I'm tired of working for somebody else. Say that again. Say, please say that one more time. For I'm us. so tired of working for somebody yes. else, and you know, and 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 meetings having to dictate my day, and mm-hmm. I just, I so I am, I'm okay with going above and beyond, paying more than my minimum. You know, yeah. the, what do you call it? You call it target practice, right? Yep. Targeting mm-hmm. my student loans. Um, I've, I have a total of nine within that 134 thousand, but just. You know, I'll probably knock out the smallest balance first, kind of like what I did with my credit card, because I know I still have a mountain, you know, even though I've tackled, you know, over 70,000 in debt, I still have 134 sitting in front of my face, right? Right. 134K. So I'll probably snowball that initially before kind of pivoting 
uh, to the the next higher, you know, the higher interest rate. Um, but yeah, I, I I'm okay with continuing to sacrifice for a couple more years so that I can I can not no longer be shackled to debt and not be waiting for someone else. Right, and I think like in the grand scheme of things, two years compared to three, maybe four years. And then I have to apply for loan yep. forgiveness. And then I'm not hundred percent sure they're going to give me the loan forgiveness, but right. then there's a possibility that if they do at that time, if I get it, it might be considered income. I, yes. then I have to pay taxes. Like there are just so many unknown factors. And I, I honestly, I'm kind of with you. Like I just recently shared this on my IG stories, but, um, our townhome in Florida, we officially have tenants in our townhome. Oh, that nice. frees up like twelve to fourteen hundred dollars a month that I'm just going to shift towards student loans at some point. Because um, I'm like you, I'm also trying to take a break. Like, yeah, I maxed yeah. out my IRA last year. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> let, me, let me take a nap real quick. But I think you know, shifting any extra money towards student loans will still free up you know, that time. And the time is really what I want. I want to, if I got to go hard for the next two years, but I get the next 20 years a lot faster, I'm perfectly fine with that. And like you said, not to knock anyone who is um, going for student loan forgiveness. If that is the the strategy that's going to work for you, definitely go for that. Um, And then for anyone who's like, I don't know if I want to do any of that, do your research. That's right. <laughs> that's okay too. But. Yeah, that's okay. Just do your research and, and make sure that you don't want to pay off your student loans or you do want to hang out and see what Joe. <clears throat> yeah. <does. clears throat> Joe, come on, Joe. I mean, Joe or any or whoever, whoever the next person is. Like, yes. So in that two years that I'm like going hard on my student mm-hmm. loans, if anything is to happen, I would gladly accepted oh, with for sure. no you know so I'm okay with that but to kind of sit around and do the bare minimum eh, I, yeah. I mean it's an option it's, though it's it an is, option it is an option it is an option um I know well I love that you said you're going to take a break and then you're going to go hard so I, I know you're not going to do that option and and like you said it's an option for others but I do also want to focus on the fact that you said you are going to take a break because you are tired of your money going toward debt so again you guys if you feel like you're at a point where you need to take a break from sending large amounts of money to to credit cards student loans card notes mortgages whatever the thing is take the break like yeah. no one is going to judge you we're certainly not no one's going to judge nope. you take the break take yourself on a staycation if you want to or you know buy you that bag whatever the thing is that you want to do or put in your emergency fund whatever that thing is you know make sure that it is going to fit in with your ultimate goal but like i said extend yourself some grace that's going to be really important throughout your journey yeah rest rest but don't stop exactly you know and 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 the way i see it and I, it, I think it took me a while to be okay and comfortable with taking a break. Um, and, and I nearly broke about a year into, was it a year, maybe a year and a half into my debt-free journey. I was side hustling. I don't know if you remember, I was working at the cycle studio. Yeah. Um, yeah and I was working full time and I was barely, you know, I was, I was getting home like late at night and then it would start all over again. And mm-hmm. it was just like, you know what, as yeah, I want this debt paid off, but I also know that I got to take care of myself because if I'm yeah. not here, that that's not going to get paid, you know? Right. And so, so just, just, I co-sign, if you need to take a break, whatever that looks like for you, take it and then mm-hmm. jump back on. Yes, exactly. Now, I think that when, when you say you've paid off 70 plus thousand dollars, right? Yeah. When, when I said I've paid off, I don't even know what my number is. I think it's like 50 something. Mm-hmm. When we say these big numbers, I think it's kind of glamorized on social media where it's like, oh, you guys paid off so much money. You know, I can do that too. But it really, I think people forget that you got to put in the work. Like, like you said, yeah. we can take a break, but when you're not taking a break, right, you really are putting in the work. So do you think people have forgotten how much work needs to actually be done in order to get to that point? I do. I think there's a couple of things that, that happen. Um, and, and they've actually caused me to kind of pivot how I share my mm. journey on Instagram. So um, I think a couple of things happen. I think one, the amount is glamorized and I don't know who started it in this debt-free community, personal finance community, But it's the, oh, I paid off X amount of dollars in this amount of time. And I don't, I never, 
I never promote or share my information that way because it can be very defeating for some people. Right. Um, and though, you know, it's not our responsibility to, um, to manage other people's emotions or how they perceive and how they take away things. Um, but I think if we are being um, inclusive in the personal finance education that we offer, including when it comes to sharing our own journey, we have to also understand that not everyone can do what we do, right? right. So I, I tend, to, tend to not say, oh, if I can do it, you can too, because people will take that as a one-to-one. Well, if Nika mm-hmm. has paid off 70000 that means I can too. Well, possibly, but what right. you can do is what I've done your very best with where you are. And that's really what it's about. So yeah, I think I think part of it is the comparison and then people being uh, defeated or because they aren't able to keep that pace. And no one said, I mean, go at your own pace. No one ever said you had to keep pace with anyone, especially anyone you see on social media. Right. And then the other thing is, is all you're seeing is that number, but you right. don't see, you know, the hours that we, side hustle. You don't see the hours that we spent up building black girl budget or debt free gonna be, you know, Mm -hmm. you don't see the sleep that we didn't get. You don't see the stress that we were under, you know, or the depression in my case that I I experienced because of all the debt that I had. You don't see how it trickles into other areas of your life. You just see this celebration. And I think that's part of the reason why um, I share bits and pieces of my life too. I share when I'm overwhelmed. I share when, you know, I, I'm dealing with, you know, my mom's health or I have a hiccup with my budget or something because it allows people to remember I'm human and I'm not just putting up those numbers. That yeah. came with sacrifice. That came yeah. with other, you know, implications. So I agree. It's not just the number. You've got to understand that a lot went into a lot of sacrifice in oh, yeah. one way or another went into making that happen. Absolutely. And I like, even when you say you, you know, you had, um, you faced depression when you realized how much debt you had. Um, I went through the same thing when I realized how much debt I had and how little money I was making as a mm. barred attorney in yeah. the state of Florida, like making $43,000 a year overwhelmed was not the word underwhelmed yeah. was the word because people think oh lawyers make all this money or you know this specific profession makes all this money and like that's not always the case you guys i'm just going to say that's not always the case but you know no matter what your circumstance is you are going to experience so many different kind of emotions and that is part of the work because you have to work through that right it's very the, the easier route is to get overwhelmed and to just give up and be like, you know what, this is too much. I'm just going to keep it moving. It's the harder part to put in the work and say, I'm overwhelmed, but yeah. I'm going to use the strategies that Nika puts out on Instagram and TikTok. And I'm going to budget and, you know, follow all the things that Nikki is saying and really start to put in the work. So don't forget that it's like an emotional roller coaster. And you're going to have the hello, but you're going to have that high when you pay off the debt or when you can officially put in an offer to a house because you have a down payment or your credit score yeah. jumps 20 points, like whatever that thing is, you're going to have a highs, but part of the work is working through the lows as well. So yeah. keep that in mind. Can and I, now, can I add something? Yes, just, please. Just real quick about that, because we often focus on, and, and you, 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 you kind of, tr- you know, kind of trigger something in my, in my mind. So you know, we're talking about um, these wins, right? And so we're talking about how people put out, you know, how much debt they paid off. But there are other wins along the way, like you mentioned, like the boost in credit score. And, you know, and I try to tell, um, you know, my clients and in my community on Instagram, you've got to celebrate the wins, big Mm -hmm. and small, you know, Mm -hmm. even if it's, you were, when you started your journey, your financial journey, you were behind on bills, um, oh, yeah. or you, you were accruing overdraft fees or insufficient, you know, insufficient fund fees, like, and now you don't, that's a win that's because a win. that shows a behavior and mindset shift. So it's not just about paying off debt. The journey is a, a, about more than just paying off debt. Absolutely. It is about doing a total lifestyle change and becoming more familiar with money and how to use it. Um, and also like identifying 
spending triggers and the things, you know, things you tend to do on impulse. So it's not just about the debt. And so I hope people don't focus solely on, you know, paying off X amount of debt. I mean, do that because that is, that is one of the benefits of the journey, but there are so many other rewards and wins along the way that shouldn't be ignored. Absolutely. I 1000% agree. And if you celebrate even what you may consider to be the smallest of wins, it will give you that boost of confidence and it will give you that adrenaline to be consistent. Like Nika, you've been extremely consistent with paying off your debt, sharing that journey with us. um, But as well as just whole, like holistically, just getting your finances (laughs) together and everything. And I'm just wondering, can you give us three tips? I know you have like a million of them, but if you could give us, I'm going to say three to five, if you want to give us some extra ones, but can you give us at least three tips on how to become as dedicated as you are? Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to just first say that I'm not dedicated to paying off debt. I'm actually dedicated to the life I said I wanted. Yes. That's what I'm dedicated to. That's what I'm doing the work. That's who I'm doing the work for, my Mm -hmm. future self. Um, But with that, one of the things I have to constantly do is remember why I started this journey in the first place and actually envision it. So it's now to the point where when I think about my future self and I think about her being debt free, com- you know, completely, I, I'm, I'll probably still have my mortgage. But when I think yeah. of her, you know, out of student loan debt, out of out of credit card debt, no longer owing any back taxes, you know, <laughs> she, I can feel what that feels like. Mm. And that keeps that's one of the things that keeps me going. I've envisioned it so much. I've seen myself in that place so many times that I now have a feeling associated with it. Yes. Um, the other Before you thing, give us your tips, I'm yeah, sorry. Before sure. you give us your tips, can you tell us what that looks like? And if it's too personal, just, just let us know. But I, I want people to understand that you can really see yourself living the life that you want and, and associate a feeling to it because you've been envisioning it so much. So what does it look like for you to be completely debt-free, including your mortgage or without your mortgage? Yeah. So, and it's not glamorous. So th- again, <laughs> this is my vision of, right? what, of what my future self is like, but to be honest with you, it's, it, it, it goes in tandem with the fact that I don't want to work for anybody else anymore. Mm-hmm. And so the debt free me is also the work optional me. Ooh, um, yes. And she is going about her day, you know, without being tethered to time. She Mm. has her money invested and it's working for her. She finally has her full season tickets to the Washington Nationals instead of her, instead of her half plan, her half (laughs) season plan. You know, she's moving about life without any worry because she's placed her money where it needs to be, whether it be a sinking fund or emergency fund, investing in a brokerage account or within her retirement account. And she knows that her money is doing the work that it's supposed to do. And it's there for her when she needs it. So my future self in this life for me isn't necessarily, um, you know, uh, extravagant, but it may mean working from anywhere, you know, and meaning Mm -hmm. working, meaning working within debt free going to be, but it means being able to do that from anywhere, which means I can travel for longer. So sometimes Mm -hmm. when I envision this, she's in Paris you know, and, but she's in her, she's in her Airbnb or wherever she is. And she's been there for a month or she's, you know, or she's in Spain. And so it's what I really envision is just freedom. I, that person that I see is not stressed about having to come back off a vacation because she has to report to work. She's not worried about asking for time off. She's not worried about, Oh, I, I have this medical appointment or this hair appointment and I've got to get back home by, you know, two o'clock because I have a meeting. That's not Mm -hmm. her. I love that. The key word here is freedom, y'all. And I I knew you were going to get to that. The key word is freedom. You can do whatever you want to do because you own your own time. And it's not like you said, oh, I have to get back to work because essentially I need this paycheck to pay the right. thousands of people that I owe money to or, you know, student loans. So the key word here is freedom. Um, it's and I, I love freedom. that vision. It sounds beautiful. So tips. Yes, please. So I actually, I actually mentioned the first, actually, we've already talked about most of them. So I mentioned, so the first one I mentioned actually right before 
we started talking about, you know, like, what does my future self look like? And it really is just envisioning that. Like you, when Mm -hmm. you decide to embark upon a debt-free journey, a financial journey, um, you want to, nine times out of 10, you arrive at that place because you're sick and tired of whatever it is that's happening, right? Yes. And so you know, you're, you no longer want that, but you should have an idea of what it is that you do want. So it's not enough to just say, oh, I want to be debt free. Okay, cool, cool. But what does that mean to you? What does that feel like? What does that look like? Right? So mm-hmm. having some type of vision um, and where you're going and why you want to get there is like my number one tip. And the reason why that's important is because when you start going through the BS, of the journey, or you start feeling a little discouraged, or it's going a little slower than what you wanted, especially Mm -hmm. if you're tackling a large amount, you know, a large balance, you're going to need to go back to why did I start this? What is it that I'm fighting for? What is it that I'm working towards? And so without establishing a why, what are you you need a foundation, you're not going to have a foundation, you're just doing it because what? because you saw somebody on Instagram doing it or because it sounds good, right? So establishing a why and then trying your best to envision that. I know sometimes envision is a a hard thing for people, right? But it is. Use your imagination. You were a kid once. Mm -hmm. Use your imagination for what that looks like and then build your life and work towards that. I love that. My next step, you know, my next tip, uh, we already talked about it. It's taking breaks. Listen, I don't have any qualms anymore with taking a break because as a single woman, I'm doing this by myself. So if I feel like I'm exhausted and I need to just hold on to more of my money when I get paid for a paycheck or a month, like what I'm doing, you know, I'm what I'm doing now, mm-hmm. do that. It's okay to rest. What is it that they say? Like, um, you know, when your cell phone is... Um, your cell phone is on 5%, the battery's on 5%. You kind of rush to go ahead and plug it up because you don't want it to die. Yep. But we don't do that for ourselves. Nope. Same thing. Rest, but don't quit. Take build in breaks wherever you need them. Just don't stop. Absolutely. Um, the other thing is, and I, I'm sorry, because I actually, I got like, I got like two more. All right. I got like, that's two fine. More. That's fine. <laughs> all right. So the other one is to take some time, um, whether you have recently paid off a debt or, you know, accomplished maybe one of the, the smaller, you know, milestones that I'm saying like, oh, you consistently stuck to your budget for a month, you know, or you paid all your bills on time. Um, look back at how far you've come. Because oftentimes, at least in my experience, I get so focused on where I'm trying to go that I forget the I forget the debt that I slayed in the past, <laughs> right. right? That slayed behind me. And so um, with that, it's like no one else should remind you of the things that you've already done. You should know what you've done, right? Because you did mm-hmm. it. You did the work to do it. So I promise you, looking back at what you've done and how far you've come, it's so rewarding it and again it goes back to um I mentioned it earlier where it empowers you and it helps you build confidence that you know you can do this and you're actually not bad with money you just needed some additional tools or you needed to better understand some terms you know Mm -hmm. um so take some time especially if you're in a lull like you know your debt payoff progress is going slower you're you're waiting for Uh, discover to finally post your last payment because they (laughs) tend to take forever when you want them to immediately post it, right? Right. Um, And update your balance. But, you know, take some time to kind of look back and look at the things that you have been able to accomplish uh, since you started. And I had another one, but I didn't forgot it now. Oh, I know. I got it. I got it. I got it, Nikki. (laughs) Building rewards. So I know we didn't get into budgeting, really. That's you. That's your wheel. (laughs) That's your wheelhouse. (laughs) But budget for fun, right? So you should always be budgeting for fun. But also when you do hit these milestones that you've set, you know, if you've, if you've been consistent in paying off debt, you pay off a card or you pay off a debt here, reward yourself. Mm-hmm. And that can look like whatever you wanted to do. I'm really basic. I, the last time, like when I paid off my credit card debt, unfortunately it was New Year's Eve. So I didn't do a whole lot of celebration. Also Omarion, you know, so yeah. I... um 
I ended up getting a cake from Nothing But Cake because I think yes. they should be the official sponsor of Debt Free Gonna Be and Debt Slayers alike. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, yeah. you know, I poured some I poured some wine and that was that was my celebration. And I tend to celebrate like that, usually with some type of pastry sweet <laughs> and some bubbly or something like that. Um, but it maybe it's you know, you treat yourself to a nice dinner or maybe you buy yourself that's been on your wish list for a while. Build in rewards because they help to keep you sane and they help to keep you going along in your journey. Absolutely. And that is something that I love to remind people of is to, and, and when we say build it in, let's say, for example, um, when I tell people that, let's say your last payment for your car note is $500. Budget $550, and then that $50 is, the extra 50 is going to be for your celebration, or maybe you just have a separate line item for your celebration, but include it in your budget so the money is there, and you're not Absolutely. automatically, you know, putting yourself in the red by trying to celebrate. Um, Absolutely. I, I like that, I, though. Yeah. That and, last, and, that, it's like, if you're making your last payment, budget in a little more for that. I like yes, that. Yes. And that way, it's already there. And the other thing is, Make sure I call it a scaled celebration. So make sure your whatever your celebration is, make sure it is proportional to the actual thing you are celebrating. Yes. So don't yes. don't pay off a five hundred dollar credit card and then <laughs> go buy like a two hundred pair two hundred dollar pair of shoes. Like you know, make sure if, if your butt cake is really what you and butt cakes are really good by the way, y'all. They so are please. Oh. please Somebody help us get them to sponsor. But if, <laughs> yes. if nothing but cakes is your thing, then that's fine. But I know some of us who really enjoy, you know, shopping at certain places or who really enjoy traveling. If you pay off a ten thousand dollars student loan, we're not gonna go to Dubai for five grand. You see, like <laughs> we're gonna scale back just a little bit. So try to make it proportional. I think when I paid off my car, which was like seventeen thousand dollars. I got a, a Telfar bag, which was, yes. and even yeah. that 150 was kind of pushing your girl. I was like, tell Feezy, why are we? <laughs> so, so that was my scale celebration. But um, you have to make sure that you are celebrating yourself. Just make sure that you're not overdoing it. Correct. Like you, you don't, don't want to do that. The, you're yeah, about to say go ahead, you're about sorry, to say yep. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to end up where you just got out of, right? Like you're trying right. to make sure that you're still, um, that you're still staying away from being in the red. You don't want to accrue more credit card debt and you just paid off the credit card yesterday. So Correct. celebrate yourselves, but just don't don't go all out, y'all. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to do any day. damage. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Nika, thank you so much. Before we let you thank go, you. Um, I just want to give you some time to promote anything that you have going on, any services, challenges on social media, speaking engagements that you have coming up, anything we can get more of Nika. Yeah, absolutely. So you can always connect with me on Instagram. I'm very active on there, more active than I am anywhere else and on my own website. So that's <laughs> at Debt Free Gonna Be on Instagram. Um, I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, I also offer uh, services like review and create my budget. So just in case you don't necessarily need that one-on-one -on -one kind of Hand holding or or constant uh, accountability from a uh, a financial coach, but you need some help either with a current budget or with someone creating a budget for you because I know budgeting can be you know a bit overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, I do offer those services, um, and uh, the link to that stuff is on my website as well as on Instagram. Uh, Millennial Debt and I actually teamed up for a You Got Food at Home challenge going very well. Um, and we decided to collab on that because we, as in Americans, one, we throw away a lot of food, so much food. Uh, on a daily basis, right? And that's money down the drain. And on top of that, you know, eating out is like one way people overspend, but it's mm -hmm. an easy way to rein in, right? So we decided to do a, um, a challenge just to encourage people to kind of one, be a part of that, com uh, that community, but also kind of just to challenge themselves to eat more at home so that they can save money. And it's been going so well. I've, we've had so many people um, share dishes that they've made for the week and 
and yes. um, you know, like recipes that they're trying out and how much money they've saved so far and what they're going to do with their money. So if you struggle with food the way we do and, and eating out and you need help reining in your grocery budget, you need tips for sticking with your grocery budget, um, we will be doing that challenge again sometime nice. this year. So definitely look out for that. And I don't have any uh, speaking engagements coming up just yet. I actually just finished my last one uh, in December. I was the keynote for uh, an or, uh, one of the YWCA locations in California, and that went really well. Um, but <laughs> you are I killing work, it. You are I, killing I, I'm it. I'm <laughs> trying to. I'm trying to get ahead of all these people so they don't do the dumb shit I did. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> But um, I, I am working on a couple projects. I can't exactly disclose them, but just know they're going to be big. Yes. Um, yes. So yeah, I've, I'm, I'm definitely working. This is definitely the, the year that I grow debt-free going to be. And I kind of walk more into, you know, understanding that I, I'm doing the right thing. I'm in the right place at the right time and that our voices are needed in this personal finance space. And so Absolutely. I, I, I hope everybody's ready to hear and see a lot of me this year. Oh, I'm so excited for all of the things that you have planned, the things that I know about and don't know about and we'll find out with everybody else. Yes, you, you absolutely will. <laughs> I am very excited. Thank you so much for being with us on the podcast today. Um, you guys, it's uh, Nika's social media is Debt Free Gonna Be on Instagram, TikTok, all the social medias and then all her the website. Twitter, yep. yep. Nice. Her website is debtfreegonnabe.com as well. So please follow her, support her. She has so much great content and like li literally everything that she posts is really palatable. Like anyone can use it. Um, it's not just for a certain demographic or group of people who are, you know, hundreds of thousand dollars in debt. Like you could be $2,000 in debt and yeah. you could still benefit from all the information that she's giving. So Nika, thank you so much. We're thank obviously going to have to bring you back on the podcast. At please do. Yes, please do. <laughs> so yes. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. You too.